My name's Chris Santini, and this is Iron Erection. If you're afraid of heights, don't even bother coming out here because it ain't the job for you, you know? The most dangerous part of the job, as you could probably see, is walking the iron, connecting when the crane brings a piece in, you know, something might happen, it could fall, you could, you could fall, you know. Being an iron worker, you get to look around, you see all these buildings in Boston, and it's like, we did that stuff, you know. This is another, one more building to add to Boston's fucking great skyline. And nothing beats, you're walking around and Maybe not this high yet, maybe like 10 or 8 stories, you see the broads walking around, they're all up there looking at you. So you start strutting a little bit up there, like, ah, you know. <laughs> For the most part, we have fun out here. I got my boy, Eddie. So we walk around and we act like we're actually doing something. I got my boy, Pete. That's why we love each other. You know, I've worked with Chris on and off for like the past 10 years and, uh, as much as we break each other's balls and, and uh, fuck with each other about mistakes that we might make, you know, we have a bond that's, you know, like second to none, you know, it's like we depend on each other for, you know, you know, we pretty much put our lives in each other's hands, you know. If, if he's tagging the crane and I have my, my hands in, in with a piece, you know, if he makes the wrong move at the wrong time while my hands are in there, my hands are gone. You know, these beams that, you know, that we work on weigh thousands and thousands of pounds. I've known Eddie a long time. This is what the men work with, boys. Me and Eddie went to college together. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually, uh, we were in the can together. Well, uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't scared out of my wits. But we got to overcome these things because we got families to feed, you know? If you don't do this, especially, you know, coming out of a, a prison environment, you end up going back to the things that got you caught up. So I think I fear being a failure to my family and my friends more than I fear probably falling. It's dangerous. It's fun. It's exciting. It's like a competition with you and your partner sometimes up there. What's the matter, Chris? You need an instruction manual? All right, what am I not doing here? I thought you were going to be a little competition at this one. Hey, somebody help him, will you? Step on the pedal. All right, keep your foot on. You got to keep your foot on that pedal at all times. Yeah. Come on, Kenny. You're killing me over here. Where are you? A little bit, all right. There. Slow down, huh? You fucker. Coming down. Come on, Pete. Get it together over there. Touchdown. Who do you think won? Look at him. Still up in the air, fucking around. I, I grew up doing this shit since I was about 12 years old. My father's got a fab shop, and you know I've been working steel since, since I was 13. He's fourth generation. Fourth generation iron, you know, iron worker. But like I said, we started off with the, the village blacksmith. My grandfather and my father were the village blacksmith back in Tuscany. Santini brothers. When we came over here, we started a little business. And to have not only him, but my other kids who are involved in it too, uh, you know, be part of the business, is, it's great pride for me. I mean, it really is. Well, the family business to me is basically something I've dreamed about my whole life as far as you know, working for my family and, and generating wealth for my own family instead of somebody else's. And that's the ultimate goal here. I just need everything to be straight. Right angles. 
Again, I don't want the cord on top of that either. Like that's good. That's a good setup right there. And if I get a phone call, I can grab it and take notes. Yeah, don't do that. I I, I just have a thing with with my pens. There, my pens and my pencils. They're color coded, and they're at the same level. And everybody asks me why I keep this little paper towel here, but the reason for that is so that it doesn't touch my desk. And as you can see, we got blue, red, green, and black. Blue, red, green. And then the pencil is always in my hand. Christopher. What? Chris, go put your glasses on. Oh my god. Go put your glasses okay. on. All right. Christopher's kind of his own guy. Do it, baby. What are you gonna do? So he decided uh, to start his own little so business and, and go out and chase some work, you know? Don't let go, Dennis. Oh, you let go. This is your first time. Jesus Christ. Right now, most of his business comes from us. Um, I know they made money off me. I'm putting jobs up for fucking pennies compared to what they, they should have been worth. Pennies on the dollar, right? But he's making money, isn't he? If he's not making money, then he shouldn't do the job. Hey, it's like anything else. Business is business, you know? If I can, if I can get him to do it for 100 bucks, and that somebody else wants 150. Well, hey, I made 50 bucks, didn't I? You can always tell when you got a new apprentice on the job. Look at that, huh? That's shiny, huh? Oh, that's brand new. Did you just get that today? God damn, brother, huh? <laughs> Is this your first job today? This is my first job, structural. Hey, yeah, usually All you right. get a little. Gotta get a little beat on. He should have run him with some dirt or something. Oh, this is his first day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, now you're an iron worker. I'm an iron worker. It's more like a trying worker. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of apprentices, you go three years of school. I did four. What are you going to do? Stayed back a year. I made it, though. He's only got two brain cells. But one is for his family, and the other one's for iron working. Well, it's no secret that iron workers are in an environment where there's a lot of hazards. A lot of fall hazards. Uh, I'm looking to make sure that the equipment that they're wearing is in place. You got to check the leg straps to make sure they're tight. And I use a picture in my orientation to show what happens to a man and you fall and those aren't tight. It's a picture of a guy's a real guy's nuts blown right out. It's horrible. <laughs> but you know, I put it up on the big screen. I say, if the, you wear your harness this loose. This is what happens to the next screen. It's just, oh, Jesus Christ. When I first came up on here, I wasn't aware, but when you start walking on a beam, they start to wobble a little bit. And let me tell you, fucking, I jumped down faster than anything else, and I left white knuckles on the beams clutching that thing. And that was the first thing you know. You, you realize it, and you go with the wobble now. So it ain't so bad. You know, you got to be a little crazy to want a man be out here and, and do this. 38 stories up. I mean, there's a couple buildings around here a little bit taller, but as far as it goes, you're on top of the world up here. I mean, who gets to go to work every day and see a view like this and get paid to do it? I mean, how, how do you beat it? I love what I do. I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs>